Good evening. Wolf Diddy here. Okay. We're going to get started tonight. It's now uh, Monday night, August 1st, a new month, summertime. Got a great little shirt here from the Wolf Driver. Okay, with his logo of his Huskies. Check this thing out. Beautiful. Wolf Driver. We're having a great show tonight. We have, um, I'm Bucky Harris. And I'm Wolf Diddy, is my nickname here. And Eric is here again, Eric David Cheris. Good to see you. You were on last night. We have some uh, repeat customers coming in. Mariano, great. You are the best. I appreciate that compliment. I don't know about that, but I'm doing the best I can for what I got. You know what I mean? <laughs> Betsy's there, very cool shirt. These things are actually, you can get, get one of these by request. We can arrange something for you. They're really cool. Look at this. It's a full thing of a husky, the wolf driver. Great top. Claire says, Joanna, hi, good evening. I'm glad you're all there with us. Joanna Collier, hello there. Betsy, hi, Wolf Diddy. Good to see you this evening. Karen, nice shirt. Yeah, it's cool. Actually, it's kind of cool because it goes with the guitar. You know, the wolf axe. Yeah, we're going to play this thing tonight. We got it all ready to go. spooky thing there going on but we'll play some tunes later on the wolf axe that's our uh, promotional guitar for this whole all dog network deal we're doing here and uh, you know y'all were uh, tonight's breed is by special request we have uh, a young lady that's uh, part of a incredible organization um, that uh, that we know about we've been promoting and talking about almost every night about the wisdom panel.com where you can get your DNA testing for your dogs uh, via it's called Mars veterinary uh, division of Mars candy and they own the patent for DNA testing and uh, we've been promoting that you go to wisdom panel.com if you're interested in getting your DNA and genetic uh, makeup of your puppies there done it's great information to have everybody should do it and it's just a very cool thing we did it with our buster to do them and just give you an example <clears throat> I took a little video of Buster just now so a lot of people say well do you have a dog or dogs and I said yeah I've got a dog his name's Buster Big Paws we call him Boz for short Big Paws Boz Paws you know kind of silly thing but anyway tonight's breed just so you know in advance is the Corgis now Francis Langford very cool shirt thank you Wolf Driver he's our sponsor this guy here and you're on that site now if you're watching the show. It's a Wolf Driver page on, it's just Wolf Driver Facebook. And uh, whatever the case, what we're trying to do is promote the love of dogs with music and so forth and everything else involved, all kinds of information. And uh, we had a request from a young lady at uh, the Wisdom Panel that I talked to this morning, and she doesn't have a dog yet, but she's looking for corgis. And we found out that were um, there's several kinds of corgis, okay? Uh, major, the ones that we're talking about are both Welsh corgis, a Pembroke Welsh corgi, and a cardigan, like a sweater, cardigan Welsh porgy, a corgi, porgy at best, corgi. So I got a little ditty we wrote about those breeds. We have the facts and figures and information about each of those and we compare them, how they're different, whatever the case. I can't afford the DNA testing. However, I have a cute dog. I need to know the breed and and I can email a picture possibly. Can't afford the DNA testing. Hmm. I understand that, Joanna. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you, if you send a picture uh, over here or you, what you want to, what we want to do with this here is go to Wolf's Gang site, W-O-O-F apostrophe S, Gang, two word, Wolf's apostrophe S, Gang. And what that is, is a, it's a group site where what you do, and a lot of people have already done this, is send a picture of your dog, who you are, and what your questions may be, and you know, you're trying to figure out the breed. And, and between everybody involved, by looking at the picture, even without the DNA testing, perhaps we can give you an idea, or someone can, of what you may have there. Now, my point is, in talking about it, I went to my vet with our pooch here, Buster, when we got him when he was a rescue at 10, 10 weeks old. He was 12th out of a litter. Last one left. 
and we were ready to get a dog. We found him online, and it wasn't from a shelter, but it was from a lady who does the shelter thing at home, home sheltering, home rescues. In other words, the lady who had this litter couldn't deal with it, turned it over to her friend who did this, and she found homes for all of them, and Buster was the last one, happened to be the last one, male. Now, I'm going to show you a little video of him, okay? You can see. This is him with his frisbee. He's a, he just loves to do this stuff. You can see him. That's Buster. <laughs> he just has a blast there. And he's half shepherd through the DNA testing and half cane corso, or corso cane, one of the two. And um, that's through the genetic testing through Wisdom Panel, okay? Before that, when I took him to the vet, the vet goes, oh, hi, Claire. Oh, he's a cute guy. He's a great guy. Debbie, hi. Good to see you again, Debbie. Karen, oh, he's adorable. He's a great guy. He loves kids, loves the kids. But what I'm, my point is, the vet thought, oh, I think he's got some Doberman in him. No, maybe, maybe some Rottweiler, too. Maybe some Shepherd. Well, he didn't know, even by looking at him. Well, ends up he didn't have any Rottweiler in the mix, percentage-wise, or even through the grandparents' tree, or Doberman, for that matter. And um, actually, I have, I'm going to share with you tonight what the Wisdom Panel does and what the ultimate printout that you get about your dog looks like. And I haven't done this before. I, I went and got out of my files. I'm going to share that with you in a little while. I have it right here. Now, it's going to be backwards, unfortunately, because we have to use a selfie camera to do the show because you can only use a mobile device, okay? But it's called Wisdom Panel and its Insights, okay? And there's a tree there, and you can see Buster's little heart with his name. And it's going to be backwards, unfortunately. But I'm going to, I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to read some of this to you, how it works. And uh, then you understand what you get in return for getting your testing, the information and the percentages and the stuff. Love the wolf shirt, Debbie says, yeah. Let's see again. It's the whole deal. It's a long one. Wolf Driver uh, has these. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. Anybody that really wants one, I'm, I'm not sure what the cost is or if he even charges. And, uh, we'll figure it out if you like one. They're very cool to have. So join Wolf's gang, and uh, we'll see what's going on there with that. You know, maybe we can work something out on the T-shirts and stickers and so forth. Emmy's there. Good to see you. Hi, you are awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate that so much. We're glad we're having a great audience. I mean, everybody's just growing. The whole idea for this whole thing is to just let it grow and, and share all our information about our love of dogs and our dogs and the issues we may have, behavioral otherwise, how much are they? I don't think he has a price on him yet, Debbie, but I'll find out and we'll let you know. I'll find out and tell you tomorrow night on the show what he's thinking about how to get these t-shirts out there. And, you know, he's not there to, you know, I don't know how many he has or how we can do it, but I know we're, he'll take care of people. That's his love, his passion, and um, so forth. So we're really not in here for making money. This is more about just sharing and it'd be nice to get some return on investment for all the stuff we do. And uh, we're trying to work that through the internet and so forth. So you're welcome, Debbie. We'll take care of it. I ain't going anywhere. I'm here seven nights a week. You can count on me, okay? Alldognetwork.com has all the shows, these live streaming shows with our Wolf News, the dog trainers, the dog yoga, doga, all this stuff is on there. Just go All Dog Network, look at all our hosts are up there under hosts. You'll see who they are, what they do. Click on and watch their shows, with episodes, and whatever the case we've done up to date. Tonight, the Corgi is our featured breed. We do different breeds every night. We try to. And uh, I'm just going to start. We've got two of them. Then we're going to talk about the Pembroke Welsh and the Cardigan Welsh Corgis. Now, back in the day, uh, a judge decided at a show that there were they were different enough, okay. And I'm going to show you some pictures, okay. Uh, they were different enough to divide them into two different so-called breeds. Now, hang on a second. Um, I got some problems here with my pictures, so bear with me. Let me uh, do something here. You know, it's always something you got to do with the internet. You know. But bear with me. And while we're doing that, um, 
I'm going to play this little ditty we wrote about the corgis. Okay. Um, check this out. That's the trip. Here we got two different breeds of corgis, both Welsh as they call. One is Carl the Pembroke. Carl the Pembroke. The other, Carly a cardigan. Carly's a female now, cardigan. Carly is the older breed. With Carl being bred just thusly. With both being descendant of the Keisha. Take care of it. So there. babies. That's Carly and Corgi, the Carl and Carly, the Corgis. Now, thank you, Claire, beautiful. Debbie, those are so cute dogs. Barbara, they are beautiful. Karen, hi, Robin, saying hi to Robin. Now, in terms of the, the shirt, uh, can you get one with your dog on it, you mean? Well, I don't know about that. We're not in shirt production, but uh, we can see about getting you the Wolf Driver shirt, which is, he's the Husky guy. He's got a pack of four Huskies, and he, he started this whole thing about the All Dog Network, and uh, love the song. Thank you, Claire. Samuel. Okay, Samuel Fernandez is there. We've got a lot of nice viewers tonight, Monday night. It's a fresh week. Now, those pictures I just showed were of the Pembroke. Okay, so now we're going to shift over here and look at the... Uh, let's see if I can find, make sure I get this right. This is going to be the cardigan. Cardigan, like a sweater. Cardigan. Corgi and see if we can see any major difference in the pictures. Ah, let's see. Let me see what it looks like. Well, they look a little different in that. There's a there's the cardigan, okay. You can see that guy. How's that? Yeah, there's a little reflection there, but hopefully you can see them. Yeah, they're a little different looking. I mean, just in certain ways, obviously. I mean, you probably wouldn't know right off the cuff, you know. You saw one walking down the street. It looks like they're a little bigger, at least these pictures are. Maybe they're not quite as puppy-eyed. They're a little growing up. Oh, they're a little bit, a little different looking, you know. I mean, we have to do them side by side, and I can't really do it side by side on the on the uh, thing here. Well, that's the cardigan corgi. And we'll continually do pictures as we go through the show here. Robin, awesome shirt, thank you. Wolf Driver's Husky shirt. It says Wolf Driver up there, and it's backwards, you know, because of the selfie camera. It's the only way I can see what I'm doing. If I do it the other way, I won't see what I'm doing. And I'm sorry about that. It also makes me look like I'm playing the guitar left-handed like Jimi Hendrix when I'm not playing it right hand. But whatever the case, it's all good. Not a problem. So back to the, let's talk about these uh, Pembroke Welsh Corgi for a moment. And then we're going to play that. Of course, we'll play that ditty again. Um, you know, the Pembroke is is a long, 
He's a long, uh, by its body compared to its legs, low to the ground dog. His back is uh, actually no longer than those of most dogs. Their legs are just very short in comparison. And the, the skull is wide and flat between the ears. Uh, the stop is moderate. The top line is level. The nose is black and the jaws meet in the scissors bite. I love that song, Sammy says, I love you saying. Um, the oval eyes are shades of brown depending on the dog's coat color. The eye, eye rims are black. Erect ears are medium in size, tapering slightly to a rounded point. Uh, the legs are very short. The feet are oval in shape. I said the deep dew claws are usually removed. The dog is sometimes born with no tail and is docked as short as possible when it does have a tail. Ouch, again. Hopefully they do that when they're just babies and they don't feel that pain. First time I've seen you tonight, and I love it. Claire says... Appreciate new viewers. Obviously, Tracy, I want a small dog male. My birthday Saturday. Well, maybe a corgi. You know, there's so many great ones out there. You know, I hope you go to a shelter and find one before you think of a pure breed and buying it from a breeder because there's so many that need need your attention at the shelters. You might want to find it just looks at you and goes, that's the small dog I'm looking for. You know, there's all kinds of sizes there, Tracy. Um, so good luck with that. When you come back and tell me what you got, and then, as soon as you get them, come back on the show. I'm, every night around 7.30, Samuel, I love dogs. Everyone who's watching loves dogs, and everybody who's not watching probably loves dogs. They're just not on to the show yet, and this exists. So a way to get that happening is just share this on your timeline with everybody to tell me you found this, this situation. All my dogs were rescued, Karen says. Absolutely. And they're the best. They always seem to be the best. I'm not, I'm not saying if you have a great, you know, purebred dog. That's not the case. I mean, my daughter has a pure lab. He's a great guy, too. I call him Crush. <laughs> Big guy. But whatever the case, it's all good. And, uh, again, the coat colors in the corgis um, are include red, sable, fawn, black, and tan with white markings. There are often white markings on the legs, chest, neck, and part of the muzzle. And we're going to look at some of those pictures again, of course, as we go. Um, so a couple of sites. We're building a new site. The Wolf Driver is building called Wolf Driver Unleashed. It's not quite our IT department's working on this. So we're going to put all our sites that are related to the Wolf Driver in one place with all the links for all the things we're involved with and want to promote, including the wisdompanel.com where you can get your DNA testing done, Walk for a Dog app, I'll talk about it later, talking about the bike springers and the device you put on your bike that you can run your dog that's very safe. Uh, you can Google that, bike springer, and look at the video and shows you how that works. And you can go, oh my goodness, I didn't know they had that. That's so cool. My dog likes to run faster than I can and needs harder exercise than I can provide on feet with a leash and walking. So, wow, I'm going to get one of those. Need help getting one. We're going to be stocking those again on the back end of the Wolf Driver's uh, uh a Petscape, he calls it, a store he has, and he's out of them right now. Uh, I see him on Amazon for like almost $130. That's too much, okay? And uh, somebody tried to get one there, and it didn't work. So we're going to be getting involved with that again because he uses four of them on his Sacco cart. A Sacco cart are these, these uh, carts, four-wheel, like, co-carts powered by an electric motor, pedals, and the four Huskies attached with these bike springers. And they go on these incredible trails and journeys uh, pulling him basically he doesn't have to do a lot because they pull and they're just amazing dogs so we're going to talk about the wolf driver's phenomena and his husky pack uh, as well as the featured breeds of the night every night because he's the sponsor and, his, and what he does with his huskies is just as a whole informational thing in itself that's very interesting regardless of what breed you have and we have a lot of people that do have huskies as well and there's a husky show I've already done on alldognetwork.com so all the shows of the breeds we've done up to date which is over a month now I think we're into our 6th, 7th week whatever the case uh, go ahead and watch them they're all saved on All Dog Network look under host Bucky Harris Wolf Diddy shows and there they are. They got ditties. We do jokes. We do. Tonight I've got some jokes that we played before. We have we kind of space them out for those that are new. Take some dog jokes. We got some uh, some poetry reading about dogs. It's just it's nice. We've got various people doing these readings that are really into it. Clever little poetry things about the dogs. All about dogs. All about dogs. And uh, then a bunch of music. Uh, not only do I play some tunes, just generic tunes that y'all may want to hear, you know, like Sweet Home Alabama, Margaritaville, the tunes you know. Uh, I just have fun with the Wolf Axe here as well. 
and uh, then we play Wolf Driver's tunes. Now, if you go to wolfsoundcloud.com, soundcloud.com, and put in Wolf Driver, you, it just goes on and on the amount of material we produced for the Wolf Driver. The Wolf Driver has come up with all these lyrics that you're going to hear, and we put them to music in different genres of music at random. Styles, genres, there's rap, there's country rock, blues, jazz, there's, everything's on there. Incredible stuff. It's it's just like he's got these lyrics about dogs and how to be and meditation songs and relaxation songs for dogs and like soundscapes and there's all this stuff. I can't describe it. You know, it's a full Disneyland of dog stuff. <laughs> So we bring all this to the table for y'all. Uh, and then again, we got dog counselors uh, on the shows. So you have behavior problems or you have training problems or issues you want to know about how to do things. I get questions every night. I'm not the guy, but I refer you to who they are uh, on the alldognetwork.com. You look up Dean Miller and Joseph Falcone. Those are two fellows that do this. Watch their shows. Out of all the episodes they've done, you might already, he'll have an answer for what you're looking for. I mean, you know, he was talking about one the other night that I have a problem with Buster, and that's, uh, I'll talk to you about it later, is when somebody comes to the door, rings the doorbell, and he's there before you are, he's sticking his nose out there, even if he wants to love him to death, that's not the way you do it. And so I trained him when he was a puppy how to stay and wait and come when I call him. And I said, you know, we did that when he was 10 weeks old, 12 weeks old, we trained him that way. He went to a trainer for like two months. And uh, let, me, let me revisit that, drill practice, rehearse, and sure enough, it worked. It worked. Come back here. Don't run to the door. Listen. Listen. Sit. Wait. I walk and open the door. Okay, come. He leaps out. It's working. I'm doing it every time he wants to go and hear something outside or the doorbell rings or whatever the case. And it works. So all these training methods work once you learn how to do them. You drill, practice, rehearse. So on with the corgi. Okay. Now, some of the differences between the Pembroke and the and the cardigan, uh, you know, the tail is awful. Uh, the Pembroke's tail is uh, bobbed, often bobbed and cropped at birth. Cropping tails is illegal in a lot of countries because it's painful. And even countries where it is legal, a lot of people opt out of cutting the tail, leaving it naturally long, which I can understand. I mean, it's like, ugh, I don't want to think about it. Uh, then, whereas the cardigan naturally has naturally has a long tail, and cropping the tail is not accepted in written standard. It's just too painful and ugly. Ew. And the reason they do these to most dogs, I mean, like they do the spaniel. The reason they might have got a glitch there for a second. Hang with me. If we ever do get cut off, don't go anywhere. I have to log back on. It's a signal from Facebook, but so far so good. Um, and, and and whatever, if we do get cut off, the video up to date saves on the timeline. Then when I log back on, there'll be a separate video to watch again, so you're not missing anything. Okay, and this is posted after I log off. It's saved. You can watch it. Then the next day, it's on alldognetwork.com as well. Uh, so this is like the Spaniels. The reason they dock their tails is because they go hunting through the, the brush, and they get their tails would get hurt and cut and scraped from thorns, bushes, or whatever. And that's the reason they did that at least for the Spaniels and probably most dogs in that case. So uh, the Pembroke's head is generally more wedge shape, wedge shape. The ears are smaller and closer together than the cardigans. Also, the Pembroke tends to be lighter than the cardigan. So there's just a couple, you know, which one you may choose if you're looking for a corgi, or you might get one of each because you want to. They're so cute. Um, Temperament. The Pembroke Welsh is highly intelligent, loyal, and able, and willing to please its owner. Corgis are extremely active and are good with children, so as long as they see the human... As... There, we're back. We had a little glitch. I'm back. I'm getting closer. There I am. Are you? I hope it's everybody still there. Somebody let me know that they didn't lose me. It'd be great in a comment. Thank you. Um, and so the difference between those guys, uh, again, the uh, Pembroke and the Temperament, um, they are... Uh, they are, uh, where would I go here? Corgis are extremely active and good with children as long as they know the pecking order, which you're the alpha. Okay, Maria connected. Hi, Maria. Good to see you again. Uh, they need their humans to be determined, to be consistent, loving approach, but showing firm leadership, of course, and uh, with proper human canine communication. Howdy! To avoid overprotective behavior as an adult. Um, the dog that is barking at you in the, that manner when... Um, 
The Pembroke tends to bark a lot and makes a good watchdog. Uh, if you find your dog is barking um, at you in order to communicate, you need to hush the dog and look into your leadership skills once again. Gina, hello. I still see you, Debbie. Good. Uh, lost you for a moment from Rhode Island. Okay, so what it does when you lose me for a moment, it's trying to reconnect. It, it disconnects for a minute, but it doesn't go totally off because I'm using the latest technology, an iPhone 6S, whereas when I was using my iPad 2, it probably it's not got the greatest as good as now, the Wi-Fi chip in the phone or in the device, and it was cutting off and had to log back in. So far, I haven't had that total cut off and had to log back in where you guys see me freeze up. I'm over, I'm gone, then I have to come back. If it does happen total like that, please stay with me and I'll log back in. Aziz, my friend, I know you keep asking about that. I tried to get in contact with them. I got voicemail. I'll keep trying, okay, for the LA, LA Galaxies to see if we can hook you up. I still didn't receive an email from you because I need your email. So please email Bucky, B-U-C-K-Y, B-U-C-K-Y, like Lucky with a B, Bucky at J Jingle Ads, J-I-N-G-L-E-A-D-S dot com, jingleads dot com, Bucky at Jingle. And I need your email in order to, to contact the LA Galaxy to see about an opportunity for you to come over to this country and get involved with their uh, soccer team, okay? You never know who they'll recruit. I have an email. You don't have email, okay? You can get free email. Just go to gmail.com, gmail, G-M-A-I-L.com, and open an account. Uh, I have only Facebook. Um, Okay, well, I'll look you up on Facebook as well, but email is going to be important for them. And open up, it's free, Gmail. Just make an account. Your name, A-Z-I-Z -Z at gmail.com. You can sign up for it and then send me an email if you could do that. Otherwise, I'll look you up on Facebook and see if we can use that. Great advice on responding to barks through great leadership. My hounds love to give me the what for when it's feeding or walk time, Maria says. So there's a good advice for that we've uh, again learned something you never know it. they're always talking to you about something that your puppies you know they they're communicating and the more you communicate with them obviously the more closer you are and the tighter you get with them this is the wolf drivers huskies and they're very close i mean they understand english like you wouldn't believe because it's a drill practice rehearse you do the same thing and buster my guy buster big paws he uh he wants to get his uh that's him he, uh, he understands when I say go get your frisbee, he gets it and he wants to play. <laughs> he wants you to grab it. If you can get it out of his mouth, throw it and he'll chase it and bring it back. Huh, bus? Look at him, he dropped it. Oop, go get it. There, he got it. So that's Buster. That's what he does. People ask me, do you have a dog? Yeah, I got a dog. So Aziz, I'm going to keep track of you. I'm going to look you up on Facebook and see if we can hook something up through there at least. But again, uh, you can easily get email. Okay, let me get glasses. These are so small. Uh, Robert Badger has a question. I have two female small dogs I rescued over 15 years ago. I'm getting ready to get a new member of the family. She is a Siberian Husky. I'm worried that they won't get along, but um, how can I go about to make the transition easier? Transaction easier. Transition. Oh, you do have email. Let's Okay. I got it. I got it. Okay. I'm going to keep that on. Oh, you have it at Gmail. There it is. Okay, I'll write that down. But uh, back to Robert's question. Okay, what I want, to, what you'd like to do, is go to the all. I'm sorry, the dogcounselor.com. This is Dean Miller. Okay, he's a behavioral specialist. He's been doing this over 15 years. And shoot him an email, Dean at the dogcounselor.com. Or you can go to thedogcounselor.com site. His phone number's there in Nashville. Give him a call. Give him a call and tell him what you're what's going on here. And uh, he'll help you out. He does Skype. He does phone calls. He does email. And, you know, he might give you the first advice for no money. You know, he's not like that. He, you know, he gets what he's supposed to get. But just a question like that, he'll be able to answer for you. Okay? If you go to alldognetwork.com, and look up Dean Miller and all his episodes. I don't know if he's up to 10 or 11 or 12 now. 
you might look through his shows and find that uh, he's one of the shows. I haven't watched them all because I've been doing this, but you might find that he's already addressed this in one of his shows when you add another uh, a dog to your family and how you deal with uh, the interaction and get them used to each other without causing a ruckus and so forth. Uh, you'll get the answer from Dean or Joseph Falcone. He's on there too. Kevin, you're on there. Good to see you. Yep. We got the we got all kinds of things going here between there's a gentleman called Kevin Smith. He's a great guy and he's look at this. Look at that husky face and the husky t shirt. Okay, this is the Wolf Axe and Kevin Tone Smith Guitars on Facebook. Tone Smith, one word, guitars. Look him up on Facebook and see what he does. Hand builds custom guitars. Amazing builder. He's up uh, in the north uh, central part of the country there in Minnesota. Does a great job. Anything you need. He also has a store. And get in touch with him through Facebook. Message him. Connect with him. Hey, you want to hand build whatever. Doesn't matter. We designed this together. And uh, he be, it's a wonderful guitar. I'm going to play it in a little bit for you. So talking about that. Um, let me just write something down here real quick for Aziz. Now, Aziz is a dog lover, I'm sure. He's also obviously a, a pretty good soccer player because he wants to try to hook up with, where are you, in Brazil or Tunisia? Can't remember. And uh, he wants to get hooked up with the LA Galaxy here in LA. So I said, well, let me get your information, see how he can hook you guys up to talk about a, an opportunity and find out how they find out your resume and what you do and so forth. He can maybe get you over here to play. You never know. Never know unless you try anything. Okay? It's all good. Once again, tonight, the breed is the Corgis. So... Welcome. One he? is Carl from Pembroke. Carl. The other, Carly a Cardigan breed. Now, Carly is the older breed. With Carl being bred as thusly. With both being descendant of the Tishon Pomeranian. Chip for peace and sweet is Valmon. These corgis are oh, oh, so sweet. Whatever the case may be. about uh, Carl the Pembroke Welsh Cargi, Corgi and Carly the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. So there's two little separate Corgis there, okay? And there's others. There's the Aussie, there's a, I've seen some others, but these are the two that we're featuring tonight, okay? Well, these little guys, um, once again, you know, to see what they look like is important. Um, let me see what we got here. Yeah. There we go. This is the cardigan. Allison Join. Hi, Allie. I know you. This is a little uh, cardigan corgi where they're a little different uh, look in them, okay? 
I'll get the Pembroke back in a minute, but this is the uh, cardigan. A little reflection there. Oh, there's one of the interesting colors. Look at this guy. You got black eyes, black this, and the brown ears. And love the shirt. Thank you. That's the Wolf Driver shirt. The big old husky on there. Just got those today from Bill. Look at these corgis. They're so cute little corgis. Okay. I didn't know what they were. Cute puppy. Yes, they're so cute, Allie. So, so the temperament, like I said, you know, the human handlers need to communicate the dog's aggressiveness with other dogs as unwanted behavior. Usually the good non-canine animals, usually good with them, like cats and snakes and turtles and stuff. <laughs> do not allow the corgi to develop the small dog syndrome, though. Okay. You want to do that. Uh, the males, the height is about 10 to 12 inches, about a foot. Females, about the same. The weight, anywhere from 24 to 31 pounds, and around 24 to 28 for the females if you, again, feed them the proper amount of food they get. They're prone to a couple of things, uh, health things, glaucoma and back disorders sometimes, and they gain weight easily. So once again, you need to not overfeed them and because if they become fat, it can cause the back problems. You know, uh, that was in the ditty there, you know, uh, you don't get like little hogs. So you need to exercise them a lot daily, of course, like any dog, and don't overfeed them. Uh, living condition, the corgis will do fine in an apartment if they're sufficiently exercised, common sense. With enough exercise, they can be calm indoors, but they will be very active if they're lacking the exercise. they are running around bouncing off the walls, you know what I mean? Hi, Suzanne. Hi, baby. Hi, I'm looking forward to some yummy chicken and rice casserole here after the show we have a great cook in the kitchen tonight she's always great makes the best stuff i'm a lucky guy i got my dog got my wife we have this great show with the love of dogs it's just life is good right now we're talking about the love of dogs and all the connections and stuff with everybody life expense expectancy for the corgis is 12 about 12 to 15 years which is on the average end, you know, uh, so forth. So, um, what we're going to do now, um, we are going to play a little uh, something here. This is kind of just a little joke stuff. They're going to play some Wolf Driver music, too. I went to the movie the other night in front of a guy with his dog. He has Rottweiler with him. Got two tickets, walks in. The usher says, well, where is he going to sit? He goes, anywhere he wants to. <laughs> Silly stuff, huh? Yeah, I've been walking down the street with my dog. He's been carrying a clock with him. Everybody turned around to me and looked and said, why is he doing that? He goes, well, I didn't want to be a watchdog. <laughs> oh, just taking a walk the other day, stop by the local fire station, say hello to the chief, thank you for the good work. He said, hey, sir, you know what the Dalmatian said after he had his meal? I said, no. He goes, oh, that hit the spots. <laughs> There's a couple of silly jokes there. Um, here, here's something interesting. This is uh, 10 good reasons to have a dog. 10 good reasons to own a dog. Super playful and up for anything. 10 good reasons to have a dog. We had a little glitch there. I'm going to start it again. Can you play a song? Yes, in a minute. 10 good reasons to own a dog. One, in general, dogs are super playful and up for anything. Two, dogs make welcoming you home one of their top priorities. Three, when they're sleeping, dogs do the most entertaining things. Four, canine companions of all shapes and sizes make great guard dogs. Five, with regular training, dogs can learn to do all sorts of important tasks. Six, it's awesome being able to make your dog's tail wag just by scratching him. Seven, dogs generally come running when you call them. Their loyalty is impressive. Eight, rescuing a canine who once lived in a shelter is humane, selfless, and rewarding. Well, a little 10 reasons to own a dog. Um, here's a tune I remember that I liked. It's uh, reminding of, of people about, uh, you know, young people who leave home and so forth. And it's about the story here that Cat Stevens did. La, 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 la. And now that I've lost everything to you, 
say you want to find something new And it's breaking my heart you're leaving Baby, I'm grieving But if you want to leave, take good care Hope you have a lot of nice things to wear But just remember there's a lot of bad and beware Ooh, baby, baby, it's a wild world Hard to get by just upon a smile Ooh, baby, baby, it's a wild world Always remember you like a child girl You know I've seen a lot of what the world can do And it's breaking my heart in two Cause I never want to see you sad, girl Don't be a bad girl But if you want to leave, take good care Hope you have a lot of nice friends out there Just remember there's a lot of bad men beware Ooh, baby, baby, it's a wild world Hard to get by, just a part that smile remember you like a child girl sing la 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 baby I love you so if you want to leave take good care hope you have a lot of nice friends out there just remember there's a lot of men and Just upon a smile Ooh, baby, baby, it's a wild world But I'll always remember you as a child girl Okay, a little Cat Stevens tune I understand he's coming back on the scene um, Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff here we could do We'll do another tune in just a minute Somebody wanted to hear a, a Kenny Rogers song, The Gambler. I mean, can pull that one off in just a little bit for you. Uh, so that, again, the feature show about the Corgi. Now we're going to shift gears a little to this guy here, the Wolf Driver and his Huskies. And we're going to play a couple of songs about him. But at first, I'm going to play this little uh, a ditty here about... Uh, yeah, about the wolf driver going down to the park with his dogs. This is uh, fun. Down at the dog park. This little the poem. The dog park is a magical place where dogs can go to put a smile on their face. Running around in such wide open fields, you think it's impossible to make them all yield when it's time to go home because they are wild. But you needn't worry, that's how it is styled. The young and the old will find that they tire sinking to drowsy from such an excited fire. Take off their leashes and let them dash around. They'll be so happy with all their new friends they have found. They line up each to stake their claim. This is mine, 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 all in my domain. But then they move on and someone else comes along. They are happy as long as their hearts are in song. Just don't tell them that it's time to go. Be kind and say, it's dinner time, no? With a tired wag of their once vigorous tail, they'll hop in the car and towards food they will sail. There you go. A little read there from Katie Caliber. Um, oh my, I'm sitting on the couch with three dogs watching a guy talk about dogs playing Cat Stevens on a dog guitar. Laugh out loud. Gotta love it. <laughs> dog Stevens. Let's change his name. That's hilarious, Kevin. Uh, Kevin Tonesmith Guitars. Check it out. Tonesmith Guitars. Tone Smith Guitars on Facebook, Master Guitar Builder. Now, Diana says, please don't like your page. Bunch of exclamation points. Did I like my page? I don't think so. I haven't pushed any buttons lately, so I'm not sure what that means, Diana, but I, I won't take it personally. Okay, it's all good. Everything's good. Um, now, we got a little song that we wrote about that guitar. 
the wolf axe. Okay, this thing, this beautiful piece of machinery. And that's the husky, the wolf axe, built by uh, Mr. Kevin Smith. You can see wolf axe there, if you can see at the top, wolf axe, it says. And just a gorgeous, great semi hot. I'm gonna stick my hand in his ear. Semi hollow body, great tone. It's just a beautiful guitar. <laughs> sounds to it. Okay, so I got a song that we wrote a ditty, an actual song about that, the wolf axe. Well, hello there, I'm the wolf axe. And especially the, the dog is singing about the guitar, that he's going to be your best companion and the best axe to play. And we're going to play songs and have fun together, you and I, country, jazz, rock, or blues. And there's four little guitar solos, actually five guitar solos in this little track, of which there's a different guy playing his solo, the guys from Kenny's Rogers Band, uh, two other studio guys in Nashville, and myself playing the Wawa stuff at the end. I'm going to play that for her. Britt Brit Savage is singing this. She does the Wolf News for our live streaming here on alldognetwork.com. You can find her shows. She's hilarious. She's in Nashville. Uh, she does a lot of jingles for me as well, jingleads.com. Great singer and great lady. So I'm going to play that. It's called uh, Play for a Dog, the Wolf Axe. <laughs> Okay, that's just a little fun song we wrote about that guitar, the Wolf Axe. Uh, be your best friend, axe to use. Play with me. It's just us two playing country, rock, jazz, or blues. Okay, I want a, one of the Wolf Driver shirts. Are we able to purchase them? Cheryl says. Well, we had a, also someone else actually earlier here, um, Betsy or somebody, I can't remember, I just, Thailand's come, but one of our uh, good listeners here and watchers, I wanted to know how we can get those. So tomorrow, I'm going to talk to Wolf Driver tomorrow or after the show tonight. It's actually getting a little late in the wet East Coast. He's on the East Coast, I'm on the West Coast. It's 11.30 there, 8.30 here. Um, and find out how we can start doing that and getting these shirts out there and what it's going to take to do that. But they're really cool. Okay, Cheryl says thank you. Yeah, they're cool. I love it. It's a full shirt. I mean, it's like long. Look at this. Pause at the bottom there. It's the Wolf Driver logo, basically, is what you're seeing there. Okay. Just like on the page you're on. So, there's a lot of things to share all the time. Hello, Wolf Diddy, Steve. Good to see you. I'm good, man. It's all good. Hello to you. And um, I'm going to play, uh, play a little song now. Now, people keep asking me, you know, about my dog. Do you have a dog? And I'm going to show you. This is uh, Buster. Buster. We're reconnecting. This is Buster. Okay, he likes his frisbee Kong. He just loves to play with his thing and tease you with it, shake it, have you pull it out of his teeth. Whoop, dropped it. Go down and get it. But that's his game. He loves that. That also with a plastic bone, he loves to do that stuff. He's just a, he's quite a character. Okay, 
And um, what he does. So that's that's him. Buster Big Paws, we call him. He's half shepherd and half king corso. Okay. So we had his uh, beautiful, thank you, Cheryl. Hi, Buster. Yeah, I'm going to get him in here for a show. Debbie says, hey, Buster. Yeah, he, he's very personable, and I just got to get him in here. We're going to do a show on um, the Cain Corso, actually. We already done a shepherd show. Uh, because all the stuff, I did the DNA testing on him, and some people can't afford quite afford to, to do it. Uh, but if you go to wisdompanel.com, uh, you get a readout after it's all done. And it, uh, hey, Buster, want to come play with me? He would, Gina, let me tell you. He's so sweet. Yeah, he play, He just loves to play. And so what happens is you get a percentage of the tree, of, of the, uh, they go up the tree to grandparents and it shows you the percentage of what some of the breeds are in your, your whole readout and explains it to you. And he was half king or so, okay, and half shepherd. And they show you the pictures of the king corsos there, right? And you can see right away his face. He's got the mug, like that white one, looks just like it. And the shepherd, on the other hand, again, you know what shepherds look like. Black shepherd there. He's got that stance and that characteristic. And at the end of the day here, when it's all said and done, there's a little thing at the bottom that says, uh, does your dog look like any of these? Well, if you can, you can get these in here, you can see he kind of does. So the white one's got his face, the black one's is black, but that's that's what it is, and it's through wisdompanel.com. It's a, it's a wonderful deal. Uh, so if you want to check that out, we're gonna we've been talking to them about you know promoting this because it's so important for y'all, especially if you get rescues, to know what you got. It helps you in a lot of ways to understand the makeup and the genetic makeup of your, of your pup, so that um, traits are there, habits are there possible allergies and whatever the case, what they may be allergic to and what, why they do this, why they dig the garden up, why they do this and that another thing, you know, I mean, you're just going to find out these things and go, oh, that makes sense, that breed's prone to do that, blah, blah, blah. It's all good. So tonight, again, the featured dog was these little corgis. Now, we were showing two. There's a Pembroke and a Cardigan. And um, these are the, this is the Cardigans. These little cardigans, they got a little different look than the Pembrokes. Okay, I'm gonna pull a couple more pictures up. Then I'm gonna switch over, see how their short little legs are so cute. The corgis, beautiful, beautiful colorings. And uh, look at this guy. <laughs> Hello. Look at the markings are so beautiful, the brown, the black, and the tan. Oh, I want this one here. She says, take me home. So cute. So now I want to shift and go back to the glasses on here so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to put the Pembroke in there and see if you can see. Um, they're both Welsh Corgis, they call them. Pembroke Corgi. And then in C, uh, what the difference is here. It says I'm not connected to the internet. I just love that when it says that, and I am connected. Bear with me on this, please. Yep, it went off. Wi-Fi is a funny thing, you know. Okay. Let's try it. There we go. Okay, let's go back and find those little Pembrokes. And um, they're just a little different looking, if you look at these images, than the cardigan. I'm not sure exactly. Huge difference, but this, I mean, if you saw them walking down the street or something, or if you went into the store, and this is a Pembroke. I mean, you know, how much different do they look? But apparently a judge at a show decided back in 1934 that they would split the these two different breeds of the Welsh Corgi into two groups because of uh, there were enough differences in their look and 
whatever the case. I can't believe their behavior is that much different. Although they're, I think it's more a physical thing, you know. And their temperaments could be slightly different. And the colorings, perhaps. So there we go. Those are the corgis. Okay. I look so sweet. I try to be Debbie. Life's too short to be bitter. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to shift gears to Wolf, a Wolf Driver song and some of his stuff. Okay. Uh, this is another poem real quick about... We did poems for each month about the dogs. So here's one since it's 1st of August. Awesome August. Awesome August. Trigger was an old dog who loved his people. Trigger. But summer was a bit more than he could handle. The kids so hyper, the parents so tense. Of these things, poor Trigger had too much sense. When he was younger, Trigger was no August fan. The changes from the bustle to the stillness. When he was younger, he didn't want to be alone, with nothing to hear but the rare ring of the phone. But now that he's old, Trigger has learned to love it. The peace and quiet is a nice respite. The days were spent napping close to the door, resting on the cool tile of the floor. While Trigger loved when his people were around, he found that after a summer of hustle and bustle, the return to normalcy was just as delightful no longer sad or so resentful. He no longer thought of it as abandonment. They had their routine and he had his. The summer was great for excitement and fun, but it was also great for quietly lying in the sun. There you go, awesome August. That was pictures of my buster. People wouldn't have even ask me, hey, do you have a dog? It's hard to get him in here sometimes and sit over the camera, but I, I took some shots of him before so we could got to take a look at him. He's a trip. Okay, so now what we got, I got a little ditty about him, but I'm gonna play first um, this thing um, about uh, one of Wolf Driver's material, okay, some songs on soundcloud.com, okay, about the Wolf Driver stuff. Now, here's one called Free Ranging. Now, what this means, you mentioned small dog syndrome, what is that? Um, let me explain that here in just a second here. Um, I'm going to give you an exact definition, Kevin. It's when, uh, let me get accurate on this, okay. Uh, hang on with me. It's, it's a name given to a collection of behavior displayed by all small dogs, behaviors that have the effect of overcoming any deficits caused by being small in stature. Typical behaviors include, um, uh, include what? They include, I'll tell you, excitable behavior, jumping up on the owners, on other people or dogs, growing, uh, growling at people or other dogs, lunging or snapping at perceived threats, Avoidance and fear of larger dogs, typical hiding behind and trying to be picked up by the owner, reluctance to move off the sofa or bed, and failure to obey commands. So if, I guess what it means, if, they get, if they're not trained properly and socialized properly, they're going to be, uh, you know, have this fear or whatever it is, and it creates that, they're, because they're small, be afraid and have these behavioral traits that we don't want, so... That's what it means, a collective bunch of attributes that you, you want to avoid and not have them have that problem. Um, and again, if you have a small dog, like you may, and he has that problem, you know, gets afraid, wants to, you know, is afraid of whatever, you might want to get in touch with Dean uh, at thedogcounselor.com. He's one of our guys that does the shows and ask him all about it and he can help you how to do something like that if you're having a problem with training or behavior issues in that regard or Joseph Falcone, he's also on there. Alldognetwork.com is where you find their episodes and their shows and their contact. But if you go to Dean, uh, it's called the uh, thedogcounselor.com. His website comes up, email, phone number, you can just give him a call, tell him you know me and all this stuff and we're doing this thing and he can answer questions for you. Great guy. 
He's actually the son of Roger Miller. Trailers for sale. And he's also a professional musician that gave that up to be a professional dog trainer and counselor for uh, about 15 years ago or more now. He just has a passion for it because he's growing up. And you mentioned small dogs again. So there we go. That's the uh, hopefully answers that for Kevin, our Tone Smith guitar builder. Tone Smith guitars. Look that up on uh, also on Facebook. Tone Smith. Tone Smith guitars. You'll see what he does. Okay, so I'm going to get to some of these Wolf Driver tunes real quick before it gets too late. And this is on SoundCloud. Um, this one is about free ranging. Free ranging is when Bill, the Wolf Driver, takes the dogs, the Wolf Pack, out to these acreage farms out in Maryland. Beautiful countryside, just flat land that uh, he's uh, got friends who have that let him take his dogs out. Free ranging just seems to mean they run without a leash. So he could be taking a motorcycle out there with him. He could be taking them out there in his truck and dropping them off, and they just stay together and they wander around. But they don't go away because he calls them back. But uh, this is a song about free ranging, okay? <laughs> Easy to be. Free ranging is what I call it, playing the wolf axe there. Okay. Um, so there's all these tunes. The wolf driver's written these words about these activities. I mean, it just goes on and on. So the soundcloud.com, search wolf driver, and it just goes on and on. He's got these beautiful uh, album cover, beautiful color logos of the, that are part of these tunes. So you can go through all this stuff. I and mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of them we've done. It just goes on and on and on. I can't, I can't explain it other than you have to go check it out. Um, let's see. We're about coming to the end of the show now. I wanted to, just a couple more jokes here that... Uh, yeah, we always get in talking about our doggy breeds. You know, you know what? What do you get if you cross a cocker spaniel, a poodle, and a rooster? You don't know. Like cocker poodle do. <laughs> Silly, huh? Over to eye doctor the other day, get my eye doctor. glasses all tweaked out from a vision. Customer in there looked at me and says, hey, what kind of dog wears contact lenses? I said, I don't know. He goes, a cockeyed spaniel. <laughs> okay, how many dogs does it take to change a light bulb, huh, folks? Well, Alsatian, I'll change it as soon as I've led these people from the dark. Check to make sure I haven't missed any and make just one more perimeter patrol to see that no one is trying to take advantage of the situation. What the Australian Shepherd said. First, I'll put all the light bulbs in a circle. 
Quarter Just one. And then I'll replace any wiring that's not just up to code. Border collie. Boxer. <laughs> Who cares? I still can play with my squeaky toys in the dark. <laughs> Chihuahua. Yo quiero got the ball. Top of spaniel. Why change it? I can still pee on the carpet in the dark. <laughs> Boxing. No, I can't reach that stupid lamb. Golden retriever say, the sun is shining, the day is young. We've got our whole lives ahead of us, and you're inside worrying about a stupid burned out life. Greyhound, it isn't moving, who cares? Jack Russell Terrier, I'll just pop it in while I'm bouncing off the walls and the furniture. Lab, oh me, me, please. Let me change the light bulb. I can, I can, I can, uh -huh, uh -huh. can I, can I, please, please, please. Old English sheepdog, he say, light bulb? I'm sorry, I don't see a light bulb. The pointer, I see it, there it is, there it is, right there. The poodle say, poodle. I'm just blowing the border collie's ear and here, here. By the time my finish is rewiring the house, my nails will be dry. <laughs> and the Rottweiler, he say, make me. <laughs> just silly stuff about the dogs, how they're going to change the light bulb. So we're just having fun. We're just having fun with the love of dogs. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's uh, little live streaming thing here. And again, if you missed anything, go back and watch it. It's uh, it's on the timeline here with Wolf Driver, uh, Wolf Diddy Show. It's also tomorrow or so. It'll be on alldognetwork.com. You can go back and watch all our episodes. And we've tried to varietize the show tonight. Uh, we got a new shirt here with the Wolf Driver. We played some jokes, some tunes, some reads, some poems. Uh, the ditty, I played the ditty about the corgis because we don't want to forget this This was a featured breed tonight about the corgis uh, Two different corgis, the Pembroke and the Cardigan Here we got two different breeds of corgis Both Welsh and they call Welsh corgis One is Carl Pembroke The other Carly a Cardigan There they go. Okay, the corgis. They don't end up like old fat hogs. But uh, we're going to say uh, what happened there. We uh, come back on there. Uh, it's almost done. Carl and Carl Sorry. Are two Welsh corgis. The Pembroke and Cardigan, respectively. Good night, Kevin. Corgi Talk to you this week. Like I said. Carl and Carly, the corgis. Okay, Carl and Carly, the two different corgis, Pembroke and Cardigan. Okay, see you, Kevin. Thank you for coming on tonight. And um, New Zealand uh, Huntaway is Kevin's new puppy. We did a show on that the other night if you want to know about the fellow who built our guitar, our beautiful Wolf Axe, Tone Smith Guitars. He just got a new puppy, a New Zealand Huntaway. And we did a show for him, actually, the other night. 
for his New Zealand hunt away. So I'm gonna do one more little tune here if I can pull it off here. Y'all remember this song, I probably, I think, um, from a fella I used to play with, icon Kenny Rogers. On a warm summer's eve, on a train bound to nowhere, I met up with a gambler, they were both too tired to sleep. So we exchanged a staring at the window at the darkness. The boredom overtook us, and he began to speak. He said, son, I made a life out of reading people's faces, knowing what the cards are by the way they held their eyes. So if you don't mind me saying, I can see you're out of aces for a taste of your whiskey give you some advice so I handed him my bottle and he drank back my last swallow then he bummed a cigarette and asked me for a bite and the night got deathly quiet hang on Kevin his face lost all expression he said if you want to learn it there's one yeah you gotta learn to play it right you got to know when to hold them know when to fold them Know when to walk away, know when to run. You never count your money. When you're sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting. When the dealing's done. Okay, the gambler. Uh, Kevin, just go to alldognetwork.com. Alldognetwork.com. And um, you click on uh, host up there, Bucky Harris. And um, you'll find the show. Let me find it. All Dog Network. Let me show you where it is here. And you can watch the show. Let's see. They're all saved there. That's what's so cool about this thing. Um, AllDogNetwork.com. The hub of love of dogs. That's what this is. Okay. Now, if I go up, pull up the site. On the far right top, it says Hosts. It's a drop-down window. Click on it, and it's got all the hosts there. You come to the back to the left, and you see Bucky Harris. You click on that, and you have my intro, who I am. Then it's got the, the various shows. The third one across the top is a New Zealand Hunaway with a ditty from July 29th. You can go back and watch the show, and there she is. And facts and figures, and a little ditty about your dog, and so forth. Peace. Okay, thanks for everybody who came tonight, and uh, good night, Debbie. We're going to look into the t-shirts for anybody who wants them. We're going to post that. We'll talk about it tomorrow night, how we can go about that. I'll get a hold of the wolf driver uh, here in a minute or in the morning, since it's already almost quarter to midnight on the East Coast where he is, and we'll talk about that. Y'all, come in tomorrow night, Tuesday night. We're going to have another breed night. I'm not sure what it'll be. Tonight was the Corgis. By special request from Amber up at the Wolf, Wolf, uh, wisdompanel.com, DNA testing. And we talk more and more and more about all these things and these tools we have, okay? Until then, have a good evening. <laughs>